I can't exist by myself because I'm afraid of myself because I'm the maker of my own evil. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> Hey, Mike. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's, what, that's exactly what you got me into. Uh, a film about obsession, madness, and uh, tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and tentacles. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's not Japanese. <laughs> no, no, you're right, yeah. Very, definitely right about that. Yeah, so, wow, this one was, uh, as, you, as people can read the title here, but, uh, yeah, this one, I came in blind. Um, I don't. I don't think I ever actually heard of this one either um, prior to mm-hmm. uh, to us or to, to picking this one. But anyway, I digress. Uh, what we're talking about, what I what <laughs> what what is this thing? <laughs> yeah, Mike's uh, a, Mike's a little flummoxed because it was a little bit of a different type movie. Uh, it we're is. the we're the first to last the nerdum. I'm my, or I'm not Mike. I'm Thomas. <laughs> That's how confused I am. I'm Thomas. Uh, with me is Mike, and we're talking about Possession, the 1981 uh, classic, or or is it? <laughs> um, it's um it's one of those that um I I hadn't heard about until. Um, till 2016 when I was listening to the wow. Shockwaves podcast. Don't be alarmed that you haven't heard of it, uh, because um, yeah, it's a it's a little known horror movie. Uh, it's uh, one of the favorites on um, Shockwave. One of the uh, announcers on or one of the commentators on it. Uh, that's one of his favorite movies. Uh, that since turned over into uh, Colors Out of Darkness podcast. Um. And that same guy, Elric Kane is his name, uh, which always uh, I, I realized that that may be a made up name because Elric from Elric of <laughs> Melon Boney. And uh, there's a um, another sword and sorcery um, character named Kane. So I wonder if he like played with that. But that that's neither here nor there. But that's where I got the uh, the movie Possession from. And I said he was obsessed with it. And uh I was like, I got to see this movie. So I got a, uh, a U- I, it was out of print everywhere except for the UK. So I got a UK Blu-ray edition of it. But now it's available uh, for everybody to watch on Shudder. Uh, so I thought it was a good time to actually start to look at this film. I had I'd been right. wanting to do it previously on the podcast, but it'd be impossible for people to really get a hold of a copy. So it would be an, been kind of hard way to uh, recommend it. Uh, with uh, with uh, <laughs> without going out and tracking down an obscure Blu-ray or something or DVD, and right. um, but yeah, it started off. Um, it, it came out in nineteen, I think eighty-one or eighty-two uh, here here in the states, or maybe it was eighty-three. Uh, but it came out in yeah, a, you, yeah, you're right, eighty-one. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. eighty-one. It came out in a badly edited version. Uh, the one we watched, I think you watched the same one, was a little over two hours. Uh, the one that first came out in the states was only 80 minutes long. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I I watched whatever the shutter version was. Okay, um, so whatever yeah. cut that one, I assume it was because uh, yeah, okay, yeah, this is yeah. the yep, this is the one yep. that I watched on shutter, the which was direct- yeah, two hours long. Yep. <laughs> the director's cut. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, yep. yeah, and yep. Uh, yeah, the and and we're just kind of going through. Yeah, so. I so I thought this was very interesting. Um, I mean, one I still don't know how I, I still don't know how to take it. Uh, <laughs> aside from like I had, I, I mean, I wouldn't say I had a good time, um, but it was <laughs> it was it, it in a I had a bad time in a good way, I guess. <laughs> like, because it just, um, good God, like I don't think somebody I I I say this, I try to not say this uh, commonly, but. Oh man, if they made something like this nowadays, I don't know. Uh, there's no, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I, this is one of the real ones of the, I don't think that they could get away with. Honestly, I don't think that any, <laughs> the, the ways, and of course it wasn't, um, it was a foreign film, uh, made by, um, mm-hmm. um, by, uh, uh Zulowski. I'm not, gonna, yeah. <laughs> I think Andre, uh, uh, probably butchering the name there, but in any case, I think, uh, um, I think they pronounce it on, Anjay or something like that. Anjay, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Zulowski, yeah, yeah. Zulowski, he, yeah, yeah. I, um, I think uh, if I was my, I did read a little bit after this because it was, it's very compelling. And of course, Sam Neill's in this, um, which mm-hmm. most people know th- from Jurassic Park and some other. I think there's like maybe one or two other ones, mm-hmm. um, and then you're kind of skipping into uh, wherever you saw him uh, play mm-hmm. or wh- however old you were. But yeah, th- this one is. Um, 
uh, and I, 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 what was my point? My, my main point, this, so it's about divorce. Um, and mm-hmm. that's kind of, that's kind of important to it. But, um, I also thought that this is very interesting too, um, that they can, they kind of say it here on the screen. Um, well, there's a little synopsis here, a little, little, mm-hmm. whatever, giving you like the nitty gritty, but it's it set in, in a divided Germany. And uh, like, boy, everything in this thing is divided. Like there is a clear line that you're on with this movie and whether you want to get really fancy, uh, fancy pants and say, oh, <laughs> life and death or, you know, something. There's definitely there's definitely um, the one the re- the thing is, is like, is this even reality? Like, uh, are these <laughs> people already in hell? You don't know if this is if this is already if they're already in hell and you're just kind of seeing their story unfold. Uh, and it kind of sort of looks like our world or whatever back then or whatever. But like. <laughs> this can be arguments made on that, but or if this is reality and like this, these are the all these people are cursed. <laughs> like I mean, everyone, yeah. everyone in this movie gets it, unless you're a demon or unless you're some kind of a creature that can morph over time. Uh, like some, it, it had a little bit of everything, didn't it? It had, um, yeah. um, you know, the elder gods kind of thing going on. It had a, you know, Christianity and and and. <laughs> god and mm-hmm. and the devil you yeah. know it had it had it covered pretty much it covered things generically in, in some cases but basically it, it gave you a a, a god a people into I, I don't know how to describe it hell yeah. evil yeah. i don't know i mean it's just yeah it, it yeah, leaves you like i've said this before and, I, and i'll kind of get off my little my little <laughs> rant here but uh, the movies that like you get done watching and you don't know how to feel and you don't know mm-hmm. that on like even several days after this is one of those mm-hmm. movies like where it's just like you almost kind of want to take a shower a little bit, <laughs> 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 yeah. but it, it, it's 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 very shocking. Um, mm-hmm. um, best way to describe it would be like if you're on a hot summer day, if you're jumping mm-hmm. in a really cold pool, um, you're shocked. Like that's kind of the, that, that's where this, where this, where it left me. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. I'm curious. It, it definitely had a, an effect on me. Yeah. When I first saw it. Yeah. Much like you, I, it was a, a bit of a surreal experience experiences. Like, did I, did I fall asleep? Am I just, is this movie real too? You know, uh, it's very, very surreal. And I think it's a lot of it has to do with the tone of it. It's, it starts it starts at 11 and stays at 11 throughout the whole thing whereas most yeah. movies will have their peaks and valleys they'll give you that time uh especially with horror movies and comedies where you know they'll hit you over the head for a little bit but then everything calms down and you you, you get done with the if it's comedy you get done with laughing with the horror you kind of you know get you know start you know calming down from the horror of it and then, right. and then it slowly builds up again and then hits you whereas this movie hits you at 11 and stays at 11 until the end, until the credits roll. And then you're, it's like you're been hit by a, by a train or something. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, and Zolofsky, uh, it's, it's worth going into his, his, um, his life because the movie, right. Um, is very much tied to that, <clears throat> which you said you kind of read on it. So you, yeah. you may already know he's from, um, communist poland uh at the time when this was made uh you know the poland was communist and he was making uh movies for poland uh before this movie and he was having to do it under the yoke of the polish government they had a a ministry of cinema and they the you know they they looked at it and said well you know if these movies are are good for poland or not and his last movie that he did for Poland was um, the Silver Globe, I believe it's called. Uh, but yeah, it, it was deemed that it was against the government, and it was burned, and um, yeah, all the sets were destroyed. And you talk about cancel culture. <laughs> this was really cancel culture of the day. Uh, like, he, yeah, we, he, we, like we want to kill you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like for yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said he couldn't get a job. Uh, as a taxi driver and here he was married with a kid and he's like he hadn't he he couldn't leave the country he didn't have a passport uh so he had a um a fellow friend in uh, america a french person that living in america doing movies and um they he, he was able to come up with a 
sort of a semi legit uh, a job or something, a supposed job that uh, allowed him to leave the country to go to America. And that was his way of getting out of Poland. And so this is his first English, I think it's his first and only English language movie, Possession. So, yeah. Uh, so he was. He had all this <laughs> tumultuous uh, stuff of, um, you know, uh, communist Poland, all of that uh, oppressive evil, in his opinion, uh, that was on him with, you know, the, the communist country. Plus, he had just gone through a divorce with his wife. <laughs> and so so he and of course, this movie is about um, again, starts with a divorce or at least the startings of a door. I don't know if they know if they even actually go through the divorce in the movie. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, so yeah, it's, it has, he says it's, um, he says the thing about movies and like his last movie, uh, the silver, uh, silver globe, uh, on the silver globe, uh, is a science fiction movie. He said, when, when you do a science fiction movie, you're allowed to put a mask on. So basically you can tell truths, but with a mask on. And he mm. said, uh, possession is a horror, a horror movie, uh, but a horror movie that you could put a mask on to tell other things. So in his mind, this movie is, is about divorce. It's very much a political movie to him as well. Um, and that's, that's, uh, kind of metaphoric, but also plainly seen since it was filmed in, uh, Berlin, West Berlin at the time. So you had that, ever present and then they they intentionally shot it right next to the wall um, right so you had that there you didn't yeah it's you, part of the movie right absolutely you could just um had filmed it in the better parts of west berlin <laughs> and it would have been a completely different movie but yeah they distinctly chose i, I think it was a the Tur turkish district uh west berlin that it was shot in that uh the apartment that the uh uh, and Anna stays at that one right there, that kind of rundown one that was yeah, right yeah. next next to the wall. Yeah, you get this whole sense of um, of darkness and evil, and yeah, just just in the uh, environment, they didn't have to build any sets. They had, you know, it right. was all all there, you know. Yeah, this this was um yeah this was a, that was a very prominent uh, character if if anything or backdrop in the in the story where you see this. I think the main character, uh, Sam Neill, is a spy of some sorts, and he's mm -hmm. trying to he's trying to uh, wind it down to have more time with family time, you know, this and that. Mm -hmm. And then you just uh, – it's it's <laughs> like almost like you keep walking into punches as this mm -hmm. movie goes on, and, and, and each punch is different. <laughs> it's not to the mm – -hmm. it's not to the same part. It's, it's almost like it's peppering you with these shots. Uh, that you 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 kind of you barely have any time to comprehend, or I mean, mm -hmm. not, or I mean, not 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 comprehend, but to um, to like get the gravity of uh, mm -hmm. a, a, as it goes on, and like where does it fall apart? It, it just gets heavier and heavier as you go forward, and mm -hmm. it did kind of remind me of one of my favorite science fiction books. Uh, uh, it definitely in my top ten for sure, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, Use of Weapons by Ian M. Banks. And in that, I'm not going to do spoilers or whatever, but if you watch Possession and you read that book, you there is an aspect of horror there um, that is that is close to it's not supernatural per se, but just the horror of of like what humans do to each other, um, whether they actually be motivated, whatever their motivation is, you know, whether it's love mm -hmm. or, or 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 passion or or money or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, or even family, uh, but you're like it, it's like um, it's almost like the, it's like uh, they're under the they're they have their own will, but they they're they're not controlled, uh, I guess possessed in a way, uh, mm -hmm. or uh, periodically they kind of lose their willpower or their they lose their sight, I guess, and then they kind of go blinded for a little bit under the possession of 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 i don't want to you know i want to tiptoe around it here because as we uh as we go through it here um uh, but it's shocking like <laughs> every step of the way yeah. it's just shocking like yeah. this is not for the faint let me let me just put this way if you are even a, a lightweight when it comes to to gore or body horror or or that kind of thing or or e e never mind the subject material 
subject material. Mm-hmm. If you're lighthearted, you don't you you should not see this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, just fair warning. You got to be made of a. You got to have a little bit robust palate to mm-hmm. uh, take it all in. Uh, and mm-hmm. I would say uh, previous to counter to like what I would normally say, which is like, you know, I'm a big fan of breaking up these these big long three hour movies and stuff <laughs> like on the streaming mm-hmm. services. I would say mm-hmm. that this is one that you should not do that with, mm-hmm. because if you stop it. Uh, it kind of ruins the flow. <laughs> oh this, yeah, absolutely. This movie is made. It's it's a roller coaster ride, and two hours is not long at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it is a it, it's one that you don't want to stop when you don't want to interrupt it because otherwise you, you'll it'll kind of spill all out and then you might not you might not go back to it. <laughs> Just being right. honest. But um, yeah, this is one uh, that that I would say don't split it up because it, it's it, this is like. One shot or nothing. <laughs> like that. That's the. Yeah. It's just a lot. <laughs> it's yeah, a lot absolutely. To take in. Yeah, and um, I guess the most <laughs> uh, likable character is, um, or the the one that, that seems to be struggling with the the goodness and the evil of the, the whole situation is Sam Neil, and and even he is kind of kind of hard to. Well, I guess no. I guess the uh, the teacher is like the 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 symbol of uh, purity or whatever her and uh, the son Bob <laughs> I love right. that his name was Bob <laughs> little Bob <laughs> right, right not 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 Bobby but uh yeah Bob uh but yeah so so yeah Sam uh, um his name's Mark in the movie yeah he's um like you said he's um he was uh, some secret government agent or something right. uh, he was just off of uh, we we have to assume that he wasn't completely there for his wife and kid, um, so now he's quitting his uh, quitting his job, or at least going away for it for a time, um, to be with his family to rebuild the the situation. Um, and he finds out his wife has been cheating on him, and um, this kind of turns his world literally upside down. And uh, his his wife's portrayed by Isabella Johnny, you know, uh, both Sam Neill and Isabella do, do an incredible job in this movie. Um, you know, the, you could almost say that at times they overacted, but I think it, uh, with the, with the stuff that was going on in the movie, it kind of had to be pitched up that high. Um, the, it kind of, uh, divorces can be very, and, uh, and just breakups in general can be, uh, life altering kind of topsy turvy and can turn, you know, the average person crazy, uh, so to speak, uh, at least temporarily. Uh, so this, this kind of really, um, there's a, there's a initial scene where, uh, Mark, uh, finds out, uh, that his wife's cheating on him and, and they, uh, decide to separate and he's off into a, an apartment by himself. And it's that, that whole scenes where he's like, drinking and shivering and just kind of going through all the different emotions reminded me of apocalypse now the beginning mm-hmm. scene the famous beginning scene with uh, uh, martin sheen when he's um, kind of coming down from uh, war in the uh, saigon hotel room where he's you know punching the air and you know punching the mirror and cutting himself and just going absolutely crazy that sort of right run it reminded me of maybe a, a lesser degree of in this movie uh, where it's more more internal he's not like fighting out but you know you could tell that he's going through a very emotional and physical reaction to the divorce and it's really breaking him down as a person and you could tell that even though he's um you know he's uh there's a scene right before that where, when he's um leaving the secret service it's very uh, immaculate uh, room. Uh, this huge that yeah, that right there. Uh, that that's I love the cinema cinema photography of this um, movie. The all the even the you they found these locations. They're not sets, but they're just perfect for the scenes. Uh, but yeah, he's in that. Um, so he's very in control in that that right. scene where he's saying, "No, I'm I'm leaving this," and he's very very kind of cool, calm, and collected, and then. Then that scene, uh, two scenes later, he's just totally broken down as, as a person, and then he stays broken down. He keeps trying to recover and find that uh, equilibrium throughout that movie, but he keeps running into situations that he cannot control that continually breaks him down even further. 
and right. uh, turns him into right. something that he he probably never wanted or right. never, yeah, but he, he it's in pursuit of something that he no longer probably should attain. That's, uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, 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 you're right about, yeah, you're right. Uh, um, I guess I didn't real, I didn't see that right off the bat. Like he is trying to control things and the more he clamps down or, or runs after the thing that the next nearest thing that he can get into or, or you know control <laughs> uh, it, like it goes sideways like uh-huh. it's kind of like the hydra you know you cut off one head and then two more pop up it's kind of like mm-hmm. that like like it's just like it's 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 uh it's kind of sad <laughs> oh absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah you, you just see him you, he, you see him slowly descend into this this weird well anyway i'll let you you were doing a great job <laughs> of breaking it down but yeah he, he really yeah descends into uh madness and uh, I did, you know, anyone that's gone through a, a, a bad relationship can see parts, uh, you know, I, I, hopefully no one's gone through exactly what's happened in this movie, but, nah. uh, but, but you can, Thank uh, God. If, you, if you ever <laughs> dated a, 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 someone that's a, a bit crazy, uh, you will see <laughs> probably some, some, some similarities in things. Uh, and then also he, um, he finds out who, uh, she's been cheating on him with, uh, Heinrich, uh, which is uh, as the um, uh, director and uh, co-writer kind of describes him as uh, uh, he's he calls him he's he's bright but stupid. <laughs> he, he's um, he's like um, uh, he kind of based him on the sort of European uh, film film guys at the time, which were uh, kind of armchair chair uh leftists um mm. <laughs> and uh uh so so he he's full of ideas but and he 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 thinks he's in control as well uh but he's very much not <laughs> he needs that persona of being in control and when they first meet uh mark and heinrich there's the that struggle of who's who's in control and each time they they encounter each other it's almost like a struggle for dominance. And I think the, the first uh, meeting clearly uh, Heinrich's in the, uh, in control. Uh, yeah. And then uh, later on, as things progress and Heinrich's uh, role in things change, he's no longer uh, maybe, maybe Anna's seeing someone else. Right. Uh, Heinrich uh, starts to lose that, that control and that self-worth that he uh, had invested into this relationship and things change uh, quite quite a bit. Yeah. And, oh yeah, and then, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and there there's a, and, and there's a lot of pettiness in this whole thing too. Oh, yeah. Which which is uh, it's sowed throughout the whole thing, and it's believable, like for the kind of the circumstances that, as you go forward. But he even kind of uh, gives it back to Heinrich too, uh, and uh-huh. says, "Hey, uh, why don't you why don't you go here? Because uh, because <laughs> your lover is over here. You know, like yeah. you don't even know. Basically, like kind of rubbing it in." Yeah. Um, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause at, at one point, Mark, uh, pulls in, pulls in, I guess, his, uh, secret service, uh, favors and gets some of his guys to track where Anna's been and he <laughs> finds out her, her location and, uh, things start to go, uh, more than <laughs> sideways. Uh, yeah. In the first, uh, almost the first, I think 30, 45 minutes of the movie plays it pretty straight. It's pretty much just a, a drama about uh, a breakup of a marriage uh, and then things so slowly starts to pull in um, this horrific aspects. And a lot of people will say that they will claim that it's not a horror movie uh, that uh, all the um, extraordinary, extraordinary things that happen, uh, like you said, the tentacle monster stuff of it uh, are, are all in, in uh, a certain person's head. Uh, which which there are indications of that in that uh, the school teacher uh, that that Bob goes to uh, Sam uh, Sam Ellie, or Sam Neal's character Mark uh, evidently has never gone to his school because uh, I guess he's been caught up with his um, with his work uh, so you know he's going to pick him up and he meets his, meets the teacher for the first time and she's ex- identical to. Uh, Anna is his wife, except right. for her hair and her eyes are, are slightly different. Right. And I think and no one else seems to see that. Um, so I think that's uh, we're seeing her through his eyes. So 
he's so obsessed with his wife, he's he sees the teacher looking exactly almost exactly like uh like his wife. Um so there's there's that little little bit of hints of saying, okay, well, how much of it is in his head and how much of it is reality. Right. Um, so you could also, you could, there, that's one of the things I love about this movie. And uh, one of the things I love about movies similar to this is that you could really play, play it at different angles, look at it differently. Uh, obviously, you know, Zavlosky, his, his um, experience with the divorce, uh, plus all the political stuff, uh, you could uh, look at it in either one of those aspects, or or both, or you know, or or just kind of focus on in on one. Um, uh, but I like the the fact that you could um, put your own uh, experiences into the movie and pull out what you want. Um, you know, by the end of the movie, and we're, we won't spoil anything, but by the end of the movie, it's it's open ended as to what the hell's actually happened. <laughs> it, it is, and it, it only, the only thing it, for me is it kind of questions like, um, at some point in this real, in this movie for me, at some point, and it's debatable, like everything, it's open to interpretation. <laughs> and that's a wonderful thing about great artwork or a, a great art in general. You know, uh, you kind of, you kind of, you're in reality for sure at one mm-hmm. point in this movie and then mm-hmm. at some point you step off of being in reality into this whole other like mess it's like um imagine your normal day you wake up and you go to work or you do your normal routine and nothing's wrong and everything's fine and everything's where it should be and all this um but then um, imagine waking up a week later and you are you're in a different state you're in a hotel room mm-hmm. you've got blood on your clothes <laughs> you just you wake up and you are at this you are at the center of a major murder investigation uh and it's like what happened it's kind of like <laughs> yeah. that's that's kind of like where you see this happen and transpired and i'm not giving anything away but uh it, imagine that but compacted in two hours and then you see this you see mm-hmm. the the story arc, but at some point they somebody stepped off of reality. I don't know. I I I I don't want to I don't want to get too farther into the weeds, but I kind of do because uh, mm-hmm. at the very end of the movie, you see you see the possession or, or you see the possessor mm-hmm. uh, kind of shadowing um, the the other the other the teacher. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll just say that, and it's like, are they? Are they the same creature? Are they whatever? Because little man, you know, kind of take he jets, <laughs> and I, I'm not gonna. I'm not, I'm, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. But he, he, you know, he he jets uh, and uh, rubber ducky time, and mm-hmm. there's a reason for that. And and it's kind of mm-hmm. like that's where you can get endlessly. You can dissect this any any different way from any one character's perspective. Um, but either way, like they're just. Uh, <laughs> Now I don't know about you, but yeah. like uh, you, if, if you've ever been around that couple that that hate hate each other, you know mm-hmm. that they're like kind of a toxic couple, and they just they always end up back together. Not not mm-hmm. not anything like to the level of what this movie d- displays. Like that's mm-hmm. that's like not like that, but you know they just don't mm-hmm. get to, they just don't get along. But for some reason, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they yeah. they they know each other very well. I I've seen that kind of couple, mm-hmm. um, and this is kind of. It, it it kind of echoes mm-hmm. it, it it answers its own question really um yeah it, it, it sets itself up to like whatever the backgrounds are like i mean good god they cover yeah. everything it's <laughs> yeah like every yeah. step all the way down to to rock bottom they go right mm-hmm. through rock bottom and then they come right back up mm-hmm. uh and, and anyway uh, it's just yeah. it, really profound <laughs> well, yeah and then uh, not not to get too personal, but yeah, at one point I was seeing a, a girl that was bipolar, and mm. um, you kind of get, uh, with my experience, uh, you that that manic swing, which this movie definitely has those manic swings. Um, you you tried to start, to, um, and I, I was young, so you know you 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 think you could fix somebody when you're younger, uh, so so and you're trying to ride those waves and try to you know, bring the person back down and, and kind of trying to meet their, um, what they, what they, what they desire, what they need, uh, to make them whole. 
Uh, but the thing is, they uh, with the mag depressive, a lot of times they don't know or or you know it's it's here and then it's here and then you're always playing catch up and that's uh, sort of the the way this movie works in that he's mm. uh, Mark is trying to find uh, that that happy world that him and his wife can either it can coexist in but she doesn't know what she wants uh she does she's not happy with herself she's uh in in torment with herself um right. so so that's being expressed upon uh the people that that she's with uh and you know there's um there's a kind of a beautiful speech that she does about sister chance and sister fate uh, how um, you know the two are kind of uh, don't know know each other, and and so she's she's very much lost uh, within herself, uh, and she she finds something um, that that brings her her peace or and wholeness, but it's a it's a, a horror that she there's a <laughs> there's a, a big scene if if anyone knows this movie, uh, a lot of times they know the scene in the subway. Uh, where she goes completely nuts, <laughs> and uh, uh, she may have may ha- has had a an abortion in that scene, or, or she's uh, lost a child, or something is expu- yeah. expunged from herself. Um, and that scene, um, I think uh, the director said they only filmed it twice, uh, but most of the scenes are from that first time. And he said there was hardly he couldn't verbally tell her what to do. <laughs> uh, but she he said, the only thing he could tell her was, you know, you're uh, effing the world <laughs> in that scene. And that scene is very gut wrenching, very visceral. This whole movie kind of brings you to that level uh, where, you that know, obviously, primal. Obviously, yeah, that primal yeah. Uh, thing. Uh, and, that's the, one of the things about this movie is that obviously they're acting, but at one point I don't think they are. They, I think they they bring themselves a lot of times up where what you're watching it feels very real, very. Uh, you know, the, there's you know with the you know there's the uh, uh, meme about the Josh Whedon uh, uh, dialogue or whatever or the snappy. You know, uh, you know, Marvel Universe sort of <laughs> snappy quips and whatnot. There's mm-hmm. none of that here. Mm-hmm. Everything feels very, very real. Um, and then, like even like this scene right here, uh, it's very conscious of, say, you know, the, uh, the, the, and politically, you know, there's almost a wall between them here. They're, they're setting right. instead of setting together, they're setting apart. Right. Um, there's that there's that great wall between between them, um, and there's always that that wall, and and they're trying to break. He's he's trying to break through to her, and and she doesn't know exactly what she wants. Uh, and then this scene ends with him just going over the top, and you know, she, well, she says something to push push him, like right. you know, you know, if he, she had met Heinrich, that she would never had it. Uh, Bob with with Mark and that just sends him over the type and he's like get out get out and he's throwing chairs and and you're you almost feel um pity for him you're, you're almost kind of wanting to look away and kind of cringe because um you you feel that emotion with him and, and you just you know you could almost see being a diner there and seeing this go on and and it, it's very visceral very real and you, yeah, he, you've, you've witnessed something like this in real life before, you know. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he also basically says, "Oh, I don't want my kid anymore." Uh, in this, yeah, like that, which is like, uh, no matter how you cut the this movie, <laughs> left or right or center or or, or in squares right. or or triangles or circles, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. uh, it it's um, you can't help but feel really bad for this for this kid. Like oh, that absolutely. he has to, like they, neither one of they, neither one of these these people uh, are fit to be parents. No, uh, no absolutely I mean, not. it goes without saying. But like the sad part is, the sad part is there are actually people in reality who are like this. Um, that's yep. the that's the more sad thing. I don't want to get too. I don't want to drag everything down like that. Mm-hmm. But that 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 is just like that. Of course, being a parent and, and I can't help but like kind of. I think being a parent made me a little bit more sensitive to a lot more things. 
uh, than I otherwise would have been uh, had my my pre kid days. But in any case, like yeah, the, these two are just like they are just. Oh, uh, and and there's a push and a pull too that they have mm-hmm. that oh, they absolutely. count on in each other um, because no matter how far apart they go, they still come right back together. Like I mean, mm-hmm. I mean every step of the way. That's just it's yep. just this this thing. Yeah, I'd echo I echo you too about you know like you know folks with with uh, mental health things. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But there are some people that that uh, you know, and I think it was a lot lot worse when we we're coming up as kids than it is nowadays. I think nowadays, people it's it's there's still stigma around it, but it's people are a little, mm-hmm. little bit more open to doing that. But there are some people you run across, and you know they they've got a handle mm-hmm. on it, and you know you 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 know there there's nothing wrong with that. There's there's some people that have it licked. They got mm-hmm. they got what works for them. But like, mm-hmm. good God, yeah, like this is like every other like. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, you're right. Like just being putting yourself in the scene and then just like from because mm-hmm. this is pretty calm mm-hmm. at this where, what we're watching here. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. where it goes. You're absolutely mm-hmm. right. Uh, your your description is on the nose. It's it takes it. It starts at 11 and it stays there. <laughs> <laughs> and just when you didn't it think you saw 11, the, breaks the dial off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see another 11 and you yeah. see you, you're right yeah. back where you were. So there's there's. There, but but weirdly though, there's there's time like where this movie lets you breathe a little mm-hmm. bit, and yeah. I think that the times like where it's just still like that, uh, all like help propel scenes like many scenes like this, like where it just it just it, you know it, yeah. it the whole thing gets grenaded. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you you did say that the let you breathe and and yeah, it definitely does like the. There are some tender moments between Mark and Bob, his son, right. uh, like with them playing around. But even there, even those scenes, you're you're kind of questioning reality at those times. There's even even whenever it takes you back down, uh, it, including like that scene with the the teacher. There's that surreal nature. Is like, okay, well, is she does she really look like his wife? What's going on here? And there's that that whole sense of questioning reality there too and uh, obviously when the creature comes in uh towards the end of the movie that's that's uh, a big kind of head scratcher is like okay what's what's actually going on here and, right um there's a there's something especially with this uh with the teacher there's the idea of doppelgangers um you know what's uh you know in a yeah there's uh, uh the, the imagery in this movie is just just astounding i, I wanted to uh that's uh, <laughs> that's obviously the creature yeah. there, but um, there's this um, uh, a lot of the cinematography is like really good, and um, I I, I did uh, I do have the Blu-ray, so I have a bunch of the extra stuff, and um, they do talk to the cameraman about it, and there's a lot of handheld, and you may not notice uh, the handheld uh, because a lot of times with a uh, handheld. Uh, photography that's the camera's like shaking and uh, getting in close and um he's the the cameraman said he didn't want to do anything like that because that that just kind of shows off that you're making a movie if you do Mm -hmm. these dramatic you know these dramatic uh camera shakes or whatever uh like it's being shot on uh film or you know videotape or something uh but but what they wanted to do they used a a wide angle lens, which you know, if you're doing handheld, a lot of times you're going in close, right, uh, and getting close shots. They actually wanted to do kind of wide angle, uh, which gets a lot of stuff. So you have to be very careful about uh, the you know the the camera in that what it picks up and stuff. Uh, but then they also wanted to do camera or or handheld so that the camera was always where it needed to be. Um, and so it never did it in a showy way, uh, but but with it being wide, but you're doing a family drama, um, there's that sense of um, you know claustrophobia, especially those scenes where uh, Mark is uh, at his house by himself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you were doing like close-ups of his face and stuff <laughs> like there, um, right. you know, you do see the dramatic part, but there's also those scenes. Uh, you, you did that 
the other shot where you're seeing the complete room and just the the mess of it and you sense that sense of claustrophobia uh there's that space around him but you know there there's like you know everything's kind of closing in on him and uh, that's uh i really i really loved uh, how how the how it was shot and and they were very keen on locations and uh, just the the cleanness, even though it's messy at this point. Uh, most of the time, his apartment is very new age and very clean and stuff. And it was very right. much uh, kind of in contrast to where Aunt Anna ends up living, which was the, sort of that rundown apartment right next to the wall. Um, so you had that that sense of him trying to maintain this uh, cleanness, uh, this pristineness, uh, Order. this piece piece of his soul. Uh, where she's just going off on the deep end over on the other end, kind of uh, a debauchery and, you know, having sex with uh, whoever. And and uh, you almost think, you know, is this his mind in two places? You know, is he thinking, you know, he's trying to keep his mind clean, but he keeps thinking about what she's doing. Uh, you almost kind of think, well, you know, this is his mind going wild as to what, what actually she's doing uh, on her own, you know, the, you know, this wild idea, you know, when you're, um, when you're separated from somebody that you're still obsessed with, you are obsessing on what they're, what they're actually doing. Uh, so this whole nightmarish world that he has her, her in is that, uh, it, how much of his reality and how much of it is his mind kind of playing on that. And whenever yeah. he goes over into her world, at one point he has to go over to find out what the heck's going on. Right. You know, that's when he completely loses it. Right. Uh, that he goes over the deep end, and uh, that's that's when everything goes. And then there's that that divide, that divide of of goodness and evil. Again, goes back to the political thing with uh, communist Poland, with the you know being trapped in the wall and tra- and being you know on the other side of it. Uh, in trying to find that that peace within yourself. Yeah, yeah, the, the and 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 he does uh, he does kind of go back and he has this very tight bond with with his wife, uh, where he mm-hmm. can't ever let go. He can never let go for whatever mm-hmm. reason, whatever you think he is or isn't, or whether she is or isn't or whatever. They are locked in there uh, as as mm-hmm. like one item uh weirdly Mm -hmm. and and uh which is like kind of like a bastardized idea of of good marriage of of something wholesome and good which is like Mm -hmm. marriage is supposed to be two people kind of come together and they make a more perfect you know Mm -hmm. entity or whatever you want to call it family whatever 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 you want to metaphysical whatever we're not gonna get into that but he um he tries to go back and put things right or at least as right as it, <laughs> if something is already tipped over what's another you know what's another 10 pounds of flesh <laughs> on top of the one that you already just took or that or that you're trying to cover for somebody else too and he's mm-hmm. he just he's he's trying to kind of get them like he, he's desperate to cling to some kind of reality <laughs> of like well we can start over you know like that that's kind of like how how it goes through them i'm not going to give anything away but like mm-hmm. there's there's a it kind of rolls up into the you know the final series of scenes uh, and, and <laughs> good God. I mean, e- even, even I would even argue even to the very last second of this character, he is making certain choices by himself. I don't know if you remember, but how, 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 you know, you get to the plateau <laughs> and you see how, he, how it, it, ends for him i guess is the way to put it i don't Mm want to i want to kind of tiptoe around it but even that he um picks and chooses oh yeah yeah Mm -hmm. um he also i I can't help but wonder too i think it's i I got kind of confused with the with the players a little bit but um there's somebody's mom i think it's it's uh, henrik's mom yeah henrik's yeah yeah. henrik's mom is there's a scene there like where they I don't I'm not gonna lay out the whole thing but basically they kind of have interaction and there's the secondary interaction and then it kind of like goes that way uh, so he he kind of goes along the same lines um, but it's definitely in his control <laughs> I guess kind of sort of um, but it's just uh, damn <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and, and so, uh, I just realized this. 
um, there's uh, within his his talking to the lady or his uh, Heinrich's mother. Um, there's a, a point where she says. I've I've never under uh, never been able to decide which what's more evil, um, you know, cheating on a spouse, hurting a child, or killing somebody. Mm. And in the course of the <laughs> you know, the course course of the movie, check check check. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah, it's like uh, uh, he's going. Uh, uh, the, the, they're they're going through the checklist of uh, of evil there. Um, yeah, it, it's it's sort of like an exploration of of uh, of evil and how far you would go. Now, um, again, uh, I'll stress that Zavlosky he's basing this on his own divor- divorce and his own experience with communist Poland. Uh, there's a tendency when you um, try to tell tell your story, uh, you're a bit biased, and you tend to try to p- portray yourself as the good guy. Uh, you know, you're telling your story, and in your story, you're the hero usually. Whereas I think he he was able to do a very mu- and and that may be the uh, to the benefit of him co-writing it with a, an American. Uh, writer, author, uh, um, I forget his name, uh, but uh, the co-writer of it, um, let's see, let me see if I can find that. Uh, but yeah, um, th- there's a lot of um, of honesty in this. Uh, Frederick Tutin, um, he does a uh, commentary on the on the uh, the the Blu-ray as well, which is which is good. Um, but yeah, um, there's a tendency. You know, Sam Neill is obviously um, you know, it's sort of the stand-in for Zolovsky in the, in this. Um, you know, if he, if he's going to identify with anyone in this, it would be Sam Neill. And Sam Neill does have a good center to him in the movie, but he doesn't come off as as a good guy by the end of it. Um, it's very it's a very honest and very uh, deep look into the soul of of these various people. And none of them, none of them are, are come out real clean. <laughs> yeah, that's a meat grinder, and that's exactly what this. That's a, yeah, it, it it they just take turns turning the crank essentially. Yeah, I wonder about that too. I wonder like, I think of course you got to be careful how much you read into these things because uh, mm-hmm. it is a movie uh, dealing with tentacle right. creature. Uh, so <laughs> there is that. But uh, if you put that aside, a couple interesting points um, were pretty blindingly obvious. But both the, the the creature, if there's a creature in here, um, it has green eyes, uh, like green eye jealousy. Mm-hmm. There's that. Um, that's mm-hmm. a pretty easy one to make. Uh, but that that doesn't really add or subtract anything to the whole thing because you're right. <laughs> you're not even uh, flirting with with something like je- that's jealousy would imply that you are jealous, but you're not going to do anything. But this mm-hmm. is like. <laughs> way hopped over that boundary we're way past doing something they're they're full on into capital offenses <laughs> <laughs> like you said yeah. check 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 <laughs> but the only thing that they have missing are are uh, a couple things it's probably good that they didn't yeah uh but i was gonna say what you're i i can't help but wonder if it's it's kind of zooming out a little bit but if this whole kind of movie is it based on like what it's like to be trapped in inside uh, a communist state where literally even if you win even if you win you mm-hmm. end up circling the drain literally um mm-hmm. just like a, just like every other character ended up in this uh yeah. it seems but or maybe he is the child in this maybe he is i mm-hmm. don't know but i mean you could well, make it you could probably make they're they're a legion i'm sure well, uh but that you could y- probably yeah and buy. you can um as far as well um I'll, I'll touch on one more thing as far as um, how much of it's autobiographical as far as uh, mm. divorce is concerned. There's a scene where uh, Mark comes back from his uh, isolation in the hotel room and he comes back uh, to check on the apartment uh, right. of a- where Anna is supposed to be with Bob, his, their son. And Bob's by himself with all his toys around, and he's got Boom. jam all Everywhere. over his face. Yeah, and he he doesn't know where mom is. Uh, that's actually taken from 
real life. That's mm. that that happened to Zavosky uh, coming in on his child uh, covered in jam uh, mm. after after all that. Um, so yeah, mm. so there's there's a lot of realness that's taken from it. And as far as the political side of it, that's that's very much ingrained too. I think um, you know there's um, you know any you know the whole communist thing is is based on some uh so ideals that are are good you know treating everybody uh fairly and and equally uh but you know how the, sometimes that you know the corruption comes in and yeah there's there's that scene uh but yeah in um uh there was uh the, one of the interviews with Frederick uh Tutin the the co-writer of this he said that uh, he was very much a leftist uh, when he met uh, Zavlosky, and um, they, they had a very close working relationship. They wrote in uh, America, they wrote, they banged out the script, but in Berlin, when they were filming at West Berlin, he would bring uh, Tutin over uh, whenever they did, a, did re- rewrites. There was supposed to be an, an older gentleman that... Um, Anna uh, had a, had an ex husband as well uh, in the original screenplay, mm. uh, a man by the name of Abe. Uh, but <laughs> it turned out that they didn't feel like they needed it. Plus, uh, the actor turned out to be completely wrong for the role, so they had to just cut cut that out. So they brought him over to do rewrites. While he was there, um, Zablowski brought him over to uh, across the wall into Berlin, uh, mm. East Berlin just to check it out. And, uh, Tutin said, you know, after seeing those, these long lines of, of people just to get a, like a snow cone, mm-hmm. he, 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 from, he, he became, uh, from being far, far left to being a moderate. <laughs> he said, mm-hmm. yeah, it really changed his, his kind of worldview of, of seeing that. And, uh, Zavlosky had a, a very hard time with, uh, the leftists of Europe who, um, had, you know, he said he called them armchair leftists because, you know, of course they could sit in their armchair and talk about, extort about the 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 wonders of uh, communism and all of this, but they're not living that situation. If you're uh, right. over in uh, communist Poland, actually living that and living under that tight yoke of um, censorship and li- trying to live your life. Um, uh, you know, perfectly within that, you know, that, that world, um, you know, that's, it, it's a completely different thing. You know, when you have the, uh, the luxury of, of, of playing with these ideas as opposed to living them. And that's again, a, a core, uh, thing of possession, the movie, uh, Sam Neill's, um, within that world, he's that world of oppression or he's trying to find his, his way out, but also wants to retain that, retain the world, but, but, but fix it. And, you know, there's those outside forces that kind of corrupt within and, uh, you know, you end up, uh, in a, in a far different place than where you wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. There, you definitely, this is very true. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, one thing that kind of just kept striking me is like, there is no privacy in this movie (laughs) anywhere, anywhere near it. There is no such thing as a closed door. There's no Mm -hmm. such thing as a whispered conversation. Um, Not really, Uh, not when you get down to it. But anyway, the sense of privacy, like there is no like, I mean, there, there is some, there's loneliness, but not true privacy because when you see i'm trying i was trying to find that 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 shot of like where the the room is around him like even though mm-hmm. he is alone he's it's he doesn't have any privacy uh no. it, it, it really not truly not 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 like there is no peace in any of these people's mm-hmm. lives and you can use peace yep. and privacy being synonymous with each other for this mm-hmm. movie but I, there's just like i mean it, it's just it's out in the open. Um, mm-hmm. and that's why you kind of, kind of wonder like mm-hmm. where, like where the, the walls close in on them. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like there's, there's just this, there's this kind of thing, which I'm mm-hmm. sure somebody smarter than me, um, could, could mm-hmm. make the analogy of big tech and we're voluntarily putting all these microphones mm-hmm. and 
camera <laughs> in our in our thing and in all this and beaming it out to everybody uh who wants to see it uh voyeurs <laughs> uh gross <laughs> um uh but yeah th- this is just oh man this is uh <laughs> not for the faint of heart um and i i do think that the ra- i was going to kind of poke fun at the rating here uh, although the rating this the rating that it gives it isn't that bad i'm kind of switching gears here mm-hmm. i you can easily add a one to that for sure and you're still mm-hmm. in reasonable territory for this movie in my opinion. yeah um, yeah it's if not uh, if anything maybe maybe half point higher maybe like uh seven point eight point seven five or getting on that level of nine uh, mm-hmm. i wouldn't give it a nine but i i would definitely it would it would be damn close um but mm-hmm. uh not not giving it a rating here but uh, <laughs> but kind of sort yeah. of <laughs> yeah yeah, and I don't think uh, I don't have a, a set top five horror movies, but um, you know, if if I was going to uh, start placing some things in, in that top five, this would definitely be a contender for for one of those those five. It's um, it's one of those movies that is one of those gems that you know, <laughs> you know, you know, 20, 30, 30 years later, it's a movie that that you discover that you never knew existed. Right. That, you know, it's, it's a movie from the eighties and eight, you know, 80, the eighties has been mined for all sorts of movies. And you'd think, you know, that, that, that we've discovered all the riches that can be found, uh, cinematically. And then this, this comes up and you're like, Oh, wow. I mean, you know, what else, what else is out there that I've overlooked or, or haven't seen or been aware of? Um, but yeah, this, this movie and, and it's has to do with, you know, someone made the point of saying, you know, it's kind of interesting that, it, that Zavosky made it out of, uh, the, the horrible political censorship that he experienced in Poland, uh, only to make an American movie that then gets censored down to an 80 minute <laughs> minute movie. <laughs> because of and and it's interesting on the Blu-ray they do they have like a little uh, fifteen minute uh, little video where it compares that uh, that American edit to the um, to the now director's cut that we watch mm. that uh, a, that uh, American edit that's eighty minutes they cut out all uh, mo- almost all of the uh, the divorce stuff and mm. made it down to uh the creature uh, this creature possession kind of movie and oh, uh <laughs> and it, it, it's they added in like omen kind of choir music and all of this nonsense and then they'll, they'll they would freeze the frame and uh kind of do weird colors with the uh evil eyes for sam neil i think um you've kind of passed over uh some of those images on on the imdb but uh yeah like that right there uh down at the bottom uh if you go back to the main page um but uh yeah if you scroll down under video see see that right there right right yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, to find that one that's uh yeah that's they edited that in uh but yeah um also isabella johnny uh she was at a very bad time in her acting career in that she was known as being very, um, uh, very uh, demanding and very bad on the set. So she was almost unhirable at this point. Oh, wow. and, and so uh, Zavlosky, uh really wanted her for the role and offered it to her, <laughs> but but she first refused it because she said, um, I, "I'm, uh, I'm." You know, I, I, I don't want a child in a movie. I'm, I'm too young to be uh, seen as a mother in a movie. But he goes, he goes, but you are a mother in real life. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But, right. but she just didn't want to be portrayed as a mother. In, uh, uh, I guess. It, yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's uh, oddly enough, I, her, her hu- husband at the time, he was hiring him for the cinema photography. And, he, and uh, her husband was like, you know, Isabella would be great for this role. <laughs> and he goes, and the director's like, I know, I tried to offer her the role. He goes, give me, give me 24 hours. <laughs> and so uh, the next day, yeah, she's like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, but it was very uh, taxing on her. She went through a lot of emotions. Also, she, the director said she was perfect on set. She, she never gave any trouble. Um, there's only, <laughs> there's only one time where she gave him trouble in that she was doing 
uh, the teacher segment where she had to have the contacts in her eyes. Mm. And evidently, the makeup artist, <laughs> he said that the, the makeup artist uh, is no longer with us so he could get, tell the story. But yeah, he was like, uh, the makeup artist was like, girl, it, you don't look good in these eyes. <laughs> and, and so... Uh, so she she had a whole breakdown in the uh, trailer saying, I, I can't do it. Uh, I'm having an allergic reaction, blah, blah, blah. And the director was like, <laughs> he said that he slammed his head up against the wall next to your face. He goes, I'll kill you if you don't come out of here in 10 minutes. <laughs> You're not going to ruin my movie. <laughs> he said he left, which obviously you probably couldn't get away with that. Uh, by today's standards, right? But, but yeah, she went out and everybody waited for ten minutes, and uh, two minutes later she come out happy as, <laughs> and uh, you know, all the tears were gone <laughs> and they were able to do the scene. But yeah, that's he goes, funny. he goes, that's uh, what you have to deal with uh, on the set. But yeah, um, but yeah, uh, but the the and um, when there were thoughts about not getting Isabella. They were they almost gave the role to Judy Davis, uh, which is an Australian actor, a, actress. And um, whenever they were thinking about her, they thought about uh, she had just done a movie with Sam Neill that they liked. And so yeah. I think that's how they they were able to they they thought of Sam Neill and offered it to him. Uh, but yeah, I mean this this movie really shows you uh, what a great job that both Sam Neill and Isabella. Isabella Johnny did in this movie. This kind of proves that they're they're an actor at a certain level, and Sam Neill considers this his best movie uh, as far as acting. Uh, so yeah, this um, and also you picked um, a doozy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you go through a lot of uh, emotions in this movie. And Isabella, there's there's a rumor that um, uh, she attempted suicide after this movie. Uh, that I guess that 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 was just, you know, there, there was so much uh, emotions that were going through on, on this. Yeah. I don't, I, I mean, I don't doubt it. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it for a mm -hmm. second, but yeah, th there's this one is one that uh, is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> uh, it, it's worth it though. Uh, in one, one, one go. Uh, um, there's, <laughs> I do want to, we won't discuss the creature too much, but I will, we will go over the creature a little bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, let's see the, the special effects guy. Um, I think his name is Carlo Rimbaldi. Uh, and they originally wanted to get HR Giger, uh, to do the special effects for the, uh, creature. Uh, really? but, uh, but they were, uh, but he, they reached out to him and he was already working on another movie at the time. So he suggested Carl, uh, Carlo R Rimbaldi uh, and, a an Italian guy that's wor was working in Hollywood. Uh, his previous things he worked on were the aliens and close encounters of the third kind. Right. And, um, so they, they, um, they kind of told him, you know, they're off in Europe. They kind of told him, uh, that they wanted sort of, a kind of a weird kind of sexual ambiguous kind of creature. Um, and, <laughs> and so he, he get, he sent over some sketches of what he was wanting to do. And they thought, Oh yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, and so he, uh, while they were filming, he was bringing over the creature uh, and they said it was interesting because they, they were doing them in these long coffin like boxes and stuff. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, and, you know, uh, you know, Berlin was like, what's, what's in these boxes security? <laughs> uh, but they had a, a real good working relationship with the government and, um, they were able to just kind of pass through without <laughs> too much trouble. Right. Uh, but so, so they get him, <laughs> he, he brings out the creature and the director is like, what the hell is this? He says a big condom, <laughs> a big penis monster. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> there's, there's one scene like that, that scene where you're talking about where you see the eyes mm -hmm. and it, it kind of has this big bulbous head. <laughs> right. And, uh, um, very phallic. Um, and he was like, what the hell did you give me? And, uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, uh, creature guy Rimbaldi was like well uh, you told me it was kind of had a sexual he goes yeah sexual 
kind of inspired, but you gave me a penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, um, but yeah, and, and, uh, the, the, uh, Carla was like, how much time do you have, uh, do I have to set everything up? And he goes, well, we're, we're shooting tomorrow. And he goes, really? I mean, we, on um, close encounters, I had six weeks just to work on the eyes of the creature. He goes, no, no, <laughs> You're, this ain't Hollywood. This is, this is European filming. <laughs> We've got a couple of days to shoot everything. And he said, the, the cool thing was, is that, um, the, the special effects guy was an Italian. He's used to for Italian movies. He's now working in Hollywood, but he's used to those, uh, down and dirty, Italian movies where you had to just get things done. So he kind of kicked into that mode. And uh, a lot of that, there's like the, a shot of the creature on the bed with all the tentacles and stuff. And they just kind of piece that together with whatever they had. Uh, right. And it's still, still pretty effective. But yeah, he said that, you know, the, you know, I guess um, the dry, the ingenuity kind of kicks in where you, you have to go, go, go. And, and it, he was able to pull some stuff off and he was able to use the, the penis monster for at least one close up shot. <laughs> but, that's funny. Well, th that's, I, I, it's kind of funny. I mean, there's, there, there, there's no real comedy in this movie at all, uh, but I kind of understand where I've seen some, I, I think I kind of understand some darker humor, like from uh, shows that I've seen in the past, like where I think this was, like, this had to be an influence uh, on the whole <laughs> absurdity of like the, you know, the, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, Lovecraftian kind of uh -huh. just, you know, there's always the tentacle there too, but mm -hmm. like, it's just like, it just, man <laughs> and, and then like that's just part of it you know like the, <laughs> yeah. probably the best way i could say it is like is this these kind of these taglines here like is it desire or violation devotion or bondage your hidden fears will be aroused <laughs> in human <laughs> ecstasy fulfilled yeah <laughs> that's pretty much like uh i mean that's a kind of, kind of wordy but like uh, mm -hmm. uh and then throw in um throw in the whole dividing lines of the world is divided with the whole the 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 berlin wall and things being yep. dissected and <laughs> divorced and divided and and yeah yep. they're they're yep. clearly not on the side of on the line of like if there's any kind of good in this film they are they're so far away from it saying funny like yep. they're way over on the other line uh, mm -hmm. of things but yeah <laughs> yeah th this one is one that uh surprised me like uh and and this one, uh, it's, it's up there. Uh, it's up there. I'll, I definitely will want to rewatch this probably in a few months. Um, but you kind of need time to breathe because um, there's going to be <laughs> all kinds of crap that I'm going to catch, you know, the, the <clears throat> second, third time through uh, that mm -hmm. I'm going to enjoy. Uh, definitely mm -hmm. not with kiddos. Uh, not until they're mm -hmm. 18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. And you were kind of pacing through the um, trailer there, and um, there's uh, the wall is very much uh, a character in the movie. Oh yeah, yeah, and, with the guards and, and they, they look yeah, the iconically through the binoculars. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that that adds to the uh, claustrophobia and the the closing in nature of it. Like when things uh, start to go wrong, and uh, you know Sam Nils think of people are watching him or following him. <laughs> it's great to have that. That <laughs> those uh, they're not actors; they're actual guards over there on the wall. Uh, kind of looking over at you, <laughs> you know, what's what's going on over there? What are you filming? You know, yeah. Uh, so so yeah, that was a great bonus bonus there. Um, and um, there's another movie that deals with um, Berlin and the Wall, uh, which uh, we watched previously on an earlier um, podcast was Suspiria, the remake mm. of Suspiria. And um, True. while I was watching that, it. I, I wonder if the director had seen this movie too, because there's uh, not that they're anything, uh, they're, they're, they're both horror movies, but, and they're not like exactly the same, but I, you know, at times there's some similar vibes that kind of that whole oppression and kind of that atmosphere that, that this movie generates. Oh God. Uh, yeah. Kind of generates in, in that, that Suspiria remake as well. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, the, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The only difference is uh, is the size of the prison. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, for possession, the boundaries of the prison are kind of all, kind of 
all around uh, the people, uh, but mm-hmm. the, it's more or less centered around them, not necessarily the location, but yeah. Suspiria was a lot more confined in that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it's still still same 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 concept. Mm-hmm. Very same yep. concept. So I get I get what <laughs> yeah. you're saying. Yeah, sure. no, so so <laughs> those people that's out there that's watching this has who hasn't seen the movie, you're like asking, what the hell does this monster have to do with uh, this movie about divorce? <laughs> uh, both me and Mike are still sometimes cr- scratching our head over that. But yeah, to uh, to experience that, you you really do have to have to see the movie. And uh, as I was watching it. Uh, if you've seen a, a, a David Lynch movie, uh, there's a similar vibe in that the 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 lines of reality and uh, the surreal are, are crossed quite quite readily. And there's a, a dreamlike qual- quality to David Lynch's stuff, and there's that to this, uh, maybe a little bit more towards the nightmare side. Uh, but um, there's scenes in this movie that are very grounded in reality as well. Um, so there's that very there's that struggle between the surreal and and the real and um, when your mind's going crazy and, and you're dealing with madness which this movie uh, to me does deal with uh, there, there there's that break in the line of reality too so I, I like and, and there's um, there very much a sense of duality obviously uh, for you know like being being in the wall and being without good and evil. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of duality and there's not a whole lot in between. And like you said, um, the the true victim of this movie is the child Bob. Uh, yeah, and, and that's the that's the pe- person that you feel feel the most for. Um, he's oftentimes off on the side or, or kind of forgotten, which is mm-hmm. very much a reality a lot of times within divorces and uh, tumultuous. Uh, relationships but he's a very much um, a central character in of himself and um you know you you do have to at the end and, and I, I think it was smart smart that they brought him back in the the end scene and um made him very much a prominent uh person so that you're left thinking about him at the end of the movie uh, despite everything that's happened, he's the one that has to go on and, and live. And what what did he he retain from this this madness? You know, <clears throat> right? Which was you know, uh, find the nearest exit uh, out. Mm-hmm. We'll leave it. And, we'll leave it. We'll and, leave it there. <laughs> well, well uh, and see what happens to Bob in possession too. You know, <laughs> fortunately, we, that that was never never done or, or conceived. So. <laughs> nope. Uh, and I don't think I'd want to see that either because uh, it, it'd probably be like some kind of uh, it doesn't matter. But yeah, no, th- this right. this was um this was a descent into. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I guess that is true with uh, Lynch and, and I guess it's just a good uh, now that you say that it kind of reminds me of uh, 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 Danae uh, uh, Villeneuve uh, mm-hmm. for uh, for his the way that he did. Um, uh, Blade Runner 2049 and Dune. Mm-hmm. Even um, there's there are very uh, very good qualities like that uh, that are there. Not mm-hmm. obviously not horror, but, but different mm-hmm. genre shift. But still, still true, uh, mm-hmm. and and it can be. Uh, but this is this is a very this is a you would think this would be an easy movie to dissect, and it, uh, not so much because uh, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot to mm-hmm. unpack. It's dense. It's very mm-hmm. dense. Mm-hmm. Um, and but yeah. Um, and if you wanted to see it now, uh, yeah. One of the favorite things I like to, excuse me, good grief, use is uh, just watch. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of tells you where where to go to see what you want to see if you even can, uh, or you have to go to other means. Uh, wink, mm-hmm. wink, nod, nod. Uh, mm-hmm. But all that kidding aside, uh, it's it's now on Shutter. Um, I would not. Uh, I'm really glad that I saw this uh, in the intended cut, not the mm. uh, the bastardized shorter version, because it would completely lose everything that it was about. It would not be this. It's not. It would not be the same movie. It would not mm. be the same. Uh, yeah. So they 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 did it wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. by, yeah, by what yeah, they did that, uh, for sure. Um, and it's um, it maybe is good that people don't remember it from the uh, 80 minute. Uh, 1980s version of it. Um, yeah. yeah, I didn't didn't get that director's cut until I think 2002. Uh, so so yeah, it's it's only until you know much recently, you know that 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 the actual version that the director intended 
uh, has come out. And um, to, to speak on uh, its appeal and, and audience um, being divided on it, uh, it looks like there's uh, some you know, t- you know uh, twos and fives there as far as uh, the ratings. But um, they did show it at Can- the Cannes Film Festival, the big uh, European film festival in uh, Europe. Uh, and um, they, <laughs> they said that half of the audience was booing the movie. Half of the audience was standing up and giving it an ovation. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's that just kind of tells you how divided this movie could be. <laughs> and uh, uh, Isabella Ajani did win like the Best Actress Award uh, at the Cannes Film Festival for this, uh, which she richly deserved. Um, and um, the director kind of pointed out the movie, uh, this movie did not win the, the Cannes Film Festival for, um, that year, uh, but it was another Polish movie that was uh, very political and very, instead of being uh, with the horror mask, uh, you know, kind of suggesting it as opposed to uh, in the, the the movie that won was very in your face, very political, very of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said that he understood why it won because uh, kind of inspired the people about the situation in Poland at the time. Mm-hmm. And in it was very very much of the time and was celebrated at the time. Uh, but it's interesting that that movie has been forgotten now, and this movie is something that you continuously go back to. Uh, oh, yeah. And that's that's one of the appeals of, say, sci-fi and horror is that you could say things that are very deeply political or very deeply personal, uh, but you tell it in a universal language of, uh, that people can understand uh, the universality of it without getting uh, wrapped up in whose side you're on, um, you know, the conflict and, say, Star Wars of the empire and the rebels that could signify whichever side you're on and you could enjoy the movie for what it is, uh, as far as, but when you, you do get to the point where you're talking about certain situations, certain political issues, uh, that's in your face, uh, they're very much of their times. And in, once those are experienced, those can be cast aside and you can move on with, uh, and that becomes like a, a a relic to history, whereas these movies that are very universal in their themes uh, can be enjoyed and understood um, throughout time. Right. Yeah, no, th- this <clears throat> is and this is going to continue um, as each generation kind of like, oh, man, it's the first time somebody discovered the Beatles or something like that, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever you or Rolling Stones <laughs> or uh, ACDC or whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Like it's going to continue to um, it, it's it's it stands on its own. That's the best possible summary I can give it. Um, mm-hmm. And and it not only that, but it makes you feel some kind of way. Um, <laughs> and like you don't know, you just don't like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, you're, it, yeah, you're definitely going to either love it or hate it. <laughs> it's going yeah, it, to invoke invoke something. You're not going to be like meh. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's gonna it's gonna provoke it's going to provoke a, a reaction uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's going to be ugly uh, initially mm-hmm. ugly. And then it's kind of like, well, well let's see how we feel. <laughs> so we kind of like mm-hmm. spin from one mm-hmm. crime. Well, I mean, really the best way to say it is you go from one crime scene to another crime <laughs> scene, <laughs> active crime scene. Uh, There's right. another way to put it, but like, um, yeah, this is distilled down to its finest spirit. Yep. <laughs> yeah and um <laughs> it's a horror it, it is definitely a horror whoever says it's not it's not it's not horror like that i don't know what yeah <laughs> I, I don't know what you're smoking <laughs> right yeah there's no freddy or jason in this but, <laughs> but uh there's a monster <laughs> yeah, and is. uh and who who the monster is is a is a good question too uh but yeah there's not like a you know sam neil is the closest thing to a protagonist in this movie but um you you're an uh, you're always kind of questioning his morals and where he's coming from. So you, you're almost, um, you're almost that, that camera. You're never like fully in any one character and in, in rooting for one particular character. You're kind of an observer and it's kind of smart that they did the handheld because it's, it's almost like you're, you, you are the camera and you're trying to decide 
you know, you're going from character to character. You're trying to decide who who you're going to relate to or latch on, and there's there's oftentimes no one to latch on to, and uh, that the whole surreal nature of it plays into it there too. There's like the the disconnect and uh, kind of like what what what's what is going on, and and who do we relate to Absolutely. in this? And and if you are relating to someone. Why are you relating? And, and, and you start questioning yourselves like, oh, well, this is kind of a horrible person. Why? Yeah, it, it, there's, um, the, yeah, and, it, and if you've been through sort of bad relationships, you can start relating to some, maybe some bad actions that maybe you did. And, and it's uh, oftentimes it, it could uh, inspire some, some, some reflection within yourself as far as, you know, what, what, what I've done in the past. You know, uh, hopefully no one's done anything quite as horrible and <laughs> as uh, is done in the in this movie. But but yeah, it's uh, it, it does does make you could confront some some emotional things, uh, no matter who you are uh, watching this movie. Yeah, I think we've all <laughs> been there. Like like where you you know you're you know like you we we've kind of called uh, called it uh, upon you know you you go through a divorce or you go through a uh, a, a breakup or something and you're mm-hmm. kind of you're just you know, you, you're processing your feelings and then it kind of mm. goes, you know, kind of everybody has like, you know, uh, their own little version of that, you know, whether mm. you're, you know, uh, drinking beer all alone, listening to Taylor Swift <laughs> songs uh, or whatever. I'm just joking. But, uh, you know, hey, if you do that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Just did you, don't, did uh, you have a did you have a camera on me or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but spy, I, spying on me. <laughs> no, no. But I can definitely tell you that uh, just if you ever get in that situation. Don't ever, uh, don't ever trust the tentacle creature. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, don't, don't, don't uh, offer him to to hang out with you. <laughs> yeah, don't, uh, yeah, don't, don't do that. Uh, but yeah, uh, this, kind of wrapping it up. Uh, do you have any final thoughts or or anything like other than just go watch it and see what make up your own mind? Yeah, because um, <laughs> you're. You're definitely gonna find you're gonna find out real quick uh, what side mm-hmm. you're you're on for sure. <laughs> uh, the, only, the other thing I'll, I'll, I'll mention is, um, yeah, I always like to start the uh, podcast with maybe a quote or a funny quip or something. I was going through IMDb's uh, quotes on here, and they, <laughs> there's some funny ones in there. There's uh, some things that um, that are unsaid that that are shown in the movie uh, mm. where where they use as quotes, but they have a a little thing where it says, you know, th- this happened. <laughs> it's like, uh, I think one of them is with the, like the, <laughs> with the tentacle, but yeah, there's down, down below where they, they have like the trivia and then, uh, they also have, um, the, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the goofs and the, yeah. Trivia goofs. If you scroll down just a little bit more, uh, you've got your quotes. Yeah. But yeah, there's some, there's some fun quotes that, down in there that you could kind of <laughs> kind of look at, but yeah. Yeah, like like the subway uh, drunk steals a banana. <laughs> That's a quote. <laughs> right, right. Like right. Uh, like there's a, there's a lot of little odd odd quotes in there that aren't really quotes. So yeah, someone was having fun with the the quotes on on their page. So um, yeah, if <laughs> the audience would like to maybe check those out. The, there's there. Uh, but yeah, I think we're uh, wrapping it up. Unless you had anything uh you want to talk about you know any tentacle monster nightmares you've had recently no just my <laughs> my initial thought that i confront you with oftentimes here which is this is not the first time that i've said these words to you like <laughs> what the h did i just watch uh you know like that kind of thing and then we kind of jump into it but like mm-hmm. i'll just yeah kind of kind of half joking aside but like yeah that's a legit question what did i just <laughs> see i don't know man what did you what did you just see <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I uh, I take it as my job to, uh, on the podcast to bring the weird. Uh, you bring the normal. <laughs> I bring the weird. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good weird, good weird. Uh, it's good, good, good. Uh, uh, put you, it'll put you in a state of mind. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah, and with that being said, as we as we wrap up here, uh, we have our 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 ever growing list of videos uh the first last nerdum uh please join us if you made it this far like thomas likes to say i just stole that from him um, <laughs> yeah. tell us what your favorite uh just just what is your favorite horror movie that's a, along these lines of like where it's just it's just out there the, the only other one that i think uh, i can think of that kind of has this kind of like a shocking 
uh, was the death metal one. Uh, but that's like mm-hmm. a more modern, um, completely yeah, different yeah. realm of things. But it's still, mm-hmm. uh, it's still that's more about being young and and making mistakes and and and, and different side of uh, different spectrum of life, uh, mm-hmm. way of life for sure. But uh, yeah, yeah we, we're takes, always growing. Yeah, yeah, it takes takes evil. Um, you know, the things that we think of as evil and humanizing them, not, not making you understand them, but right. kind of humanize them and, and let you see how someone could get to that level of, of, of quote unquote evil. Uh, cause you know, right. we often like to say evil monsters and all that, that kind of puts it to the other side of things like, you know, that's, that's the other, you know, monster, you know, that's not me. That's not society. It's a monster. Uh, right. Whereas, you know, obviously, uh, all the monsters we know are human. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and they, they got there somewhat, somehow, uh, whether it's, um, you know, some mental defect or, um, you know, society or something that's, you know, well, we won't get into the, <laughs> the uh, debate of nurture, nurture, nature, whatever. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. But uh, with that being said, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I've been Mike uh, and, and I'm uh, Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, and we'll see you next week. Uh, mm-hmm. We're looking forward to uh, we got some special surprise on the horizon in the next couple months. Uh, and we we can't wait to share that news with you in a little bit uh, once we get that solidified. Uh, mm-hmm. we'll, uh, we'll probably give a little sneak peek in our, in, uh, one of these, one of these grab bags here, uh, if not, mm-hmm. uh, but we'll see. Um, uh, and again, uh, again, uh, like subscribe, tell us if you didn't like it, tell us why, why was, mm-hmm. why we're so stupid and why we picked the dumbest <laughs> pick on the mm-hmm. face of the planet. Uh, and I promise you, uh, we can point you to another dumb one mm-hmm. that truly is dumb. Uh, if, <laughs> if, if you, if you so choose to do that, but in any case, um, we're always looking out for feedback. Um, we're, we're growing here. Um, mm-hmm. uh, looking yeah. forward to more, but I, I just want to thank you again, Thomas, because like without you, like this, you know, like you say, you bring the weird, <laughs> you definitely bring the interesting. That's for damn sure. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I definitely bring the, the normie side of things for some things, unless we're talking mm-hmm. sci-fi and then I get a little weird, but, uh, but <laughs> hey, in any case, hey, we all, we all get weird a little bit sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, in any case, uh, uh, we'll see you next week. Yep, stay strange.